Okay, my friends. Cameron was asking me about doing exercises and he wanted to know what exercises would be best for the different parts of the body. And uh, what I said to Cameron was that I want you to exercise every part of your body. You know, crashes for your hands. That's what we're going to do this evening. These are strengthening your hands so that you can pull that bow and hold that bow and direct that bow where you want it to go. <laughs> so this is how we get started. But uh, do all your exercises, your leg exercises, your waist exercises, your back exercises, your hand exercises, your biceps, do them all. And that will build up your general strength. And then of course, when you shoot your bow, your bow will develop the necessary muscles for using it, but you will be strong all over. If you're not strong all over, then you're weak everywhere. You have to be strong everywhere to be strong everywhere. <laughs> it's like a chain, you know? It's only as strong as its weakest length. But anyhow, this is a simple exercise and uh, you can get these things anywhere and that will build up your hands so that you can shoot good, okay? Okay, back in a minute. practice. We'll take a few shots here with our English longbow. There's a couple of styles of bow like this. They're very similar but they are different. Uh, one of the original styles was called the Welsh longbow. And the Welsh longbow, the main difference was that, of course, it was made from elm. Now, elm is a natural wood. Uh, it has big bumps on it. They look very, very rugged, and they were very powerful. But uh, when the English adopted this style, they started to make them out of yew. So the English longbow is a yew bow, and the Welsh longbow is one that's made out of elm. Very similar in design. Some of the early ones uh, we find was um, a, a Yahtzee in the in the Alps. Uh, when he died 5,300 years ago, he had an English longbow. It was made out of yew, even though it came from uh, uh, the Alps. So. It's quite controversial. I had one fellow telling me that the uh, Yachis bow was a, a short bow. Well, it wasn't. It was actually 71.2 uh, or 71 and a half inches long, which is a long bow. to shoot. You uh, is a very springy wood and the pressure builds up slowly so it's controllable. But that's the main difference in uh, the Welsh longbow and the English longbow. Simply that one is made out of you and the other out of elm. Okay, so uh, we'll just stop for a minute and then we'll do something else. But I'll be right back. And, uh, just let you check this out. And there's <laughs> there's Missy, my mascot. And uh, anyhow, we'll just take a quick look down here, but. You can shoot these bows fairly accurately. You can see that, you know, the group is right in the same spot. And that's all that you need, you know. That's all that you need. Let's change the tunes. Back in a minute. Okay, my friends, let's see if we can take a couple of shots without knocking the camera over.
One of the nice things about this kind of bow is just that it's just the size of your hand, you know? Just the size of your hand. It's got no sharp edges or anything like that. It's like those uh, modern pistol grip type bows, you know? Very fancy, very ergonomic, but really, there's nothing more ergonomic to the human hand than a branch. A branch, simplest and best one of them all, fits the hand every time. Sometimes we outsmart ourselves. It's an enjoyable sport. consistent that's all you need to be you can do this simple stuff I'm telling you and practice it you'll get there okay boys back in a minute okay my friends let's take a couple more shots here back in the middle ages we used to mark the distances I'll tell you in a second used to mark the distances so that we knew how far to shoot. So we would get boys and they would take a few rocks and put them out at 40 yards and a few more rocks at 60 yards and a few more at 80 and a few more at 100 and then 150. And in that way, when the enemy were advancing, if they crossed the point where you saw the, uh, the 90 foot pile or the 90 yard pile of rocks, the sergeant major would take his staff and he would hold it on an angle and all the other archers could look over and see the angle that he wanted and they could all loose together on the same angle. And then many times it was just fire at will, you know? The closer it gets, the faster it gets. It's a, it's a great sport and it has a long history.
you can, you know, uh, 70, 70 shots a day will keep you, keep you uh, learning and training and in shape. Yeah, a bow, uh, a bow like this is the latest kind of bow that they would find on the Mary Rose. And probably, I would say that the best weight for war bows is about 70 to 80 pounds. But uh, this bow is more of a hunting weight bow. And 43 pounds, you know, with real hunting tips, will take down any animal in the world, from a hunting point of view, that is, you know. Had to look for that one. It's there. When you know what you're looking for, you know what you're looking for. And uh, the main thing is that you aim with your left hand. The left hand that directs the arrow. You know? See, there's stuff here I can't show you, so. Anyhow, music's over, so we're over. Okay. But uh, that's the technique, you know, is that we want to be able to learn to point the arrow with the left hand. And when we do that, we can keep them all in a nice little area. Uh, if we were pretending that that was a, a, a deer, you know, they're all right around the heart. Very good. And that's all you need to do, right? Relax those fingers in the right hand, but don't move it around. And then push it on with the left. Okay, boys. Talk to you later. Bye now.